Praise the Lord. Right now I'd like to look at the three days and three nights doctrine and it does not have to be hard to understand. You have a type of speech that the Bible uses to which this can be understood. I went through different studies of this. It's been a few years now to try to get a feel for what was going on on the Jewish calendar when it came to feast days and Sabbaths and things like that. And it all goes together. What I found was different Judaizers would come into the three days and three nights and make a mess out of it. And there seemed to be an underlining cause of bewitching. And this is what I see with other doctrines as well, Judaizing being not special, just that the New Testament writings deal heavily against the Judaizer. So not that that's the only heresy or something, but you really have to be outside of reading the word of truth for balance to get into a Judaizing mentality. What makes it no different than all these other heretical movements and such is because it's just not biblical. And a lot of it, they push back on Catholics because it's no different than the Lordship Salvation deniers or people that always cry work salvation. It's no different than Unitarians, no different than Oneness. They always say, oh, your doctrine is Catholic. And Judaizers do the same thing with the Sabbath. And one way, shape, or another, I'm pretty sure, I mean, I've gone through some of this material years ago that they twist this three days and three nights thing into very strange doctrine. And I think one time I even read that Jesus rose again on the Sabbath. And it's just very odd, odd doctrine. So again, I think when people move on from the bewitching and understand what the Bible's teaching, they're probably not as susceptible. But people new to the faith are get very susceptible to all these different doctrines that are out there. And then they start to try to keep days and times and, you know, you're going to get shipwrecked is what's going to happen. So what I'm going to do is go through this, give you the explanation from the writings of the scriptures to give the proper knowledge of what Matthew 12 means. So that would be a good place to start. I'm going to read... Matthew 12:40. Okay, and then we'll start to go through it. So Matthew 12:40 reads, For as Jonas was three days and three nights in the whale's belly, so shall the Son of Man be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. Okay? So, some will say, well, it has to be 72 hours then. Or else, how could it be three days and three nights? And I think it would be fair to at least ask that question if you have a sound mind about it and out of sincerity. Okay, that could be understood. Why? Why does it say this when the Bible teaches that our Lord was put to death on Passover and was buried, okay, on Passover, spent the following day in the grave on the Sabbath, and then rose again early on the first day of the week. Is that three whole days and three whole nights? Not to your idea, if you're dogmatic, that has to be 72 literal hours. Well, of course, it's not 72 literal hours. But that's not the point of the saying in the Bible. 
okay? The point of the saying is that it's a manner of speech that is used to where if any of the day has the occurrence, it's counted as a whole day. So if Jesus was put to death on Passover, which is Nisan 14, which is to the Jew, the sixth day, all right? I'll just talk about this briefly. First off, when people say the Sabbath is Saturday, they're making that up. They don't know that, all right? It doesn't matter to us anyway, because we don't keep the Sabbath. There are some that we would consider weak in the faith who in, you know, being unsure, they think they need to do these things. We only allow for very small amounts of that. Okay, once it gets escalated, it has to be rebuked and given over to Satan. Okay, however, there is no proof from anyone that every Saturday on our current calendar is the seventh day going back to Genesis, or that is on the tables of stone. They made it up. And the reason why is because Rome talks about Sunday and they talk about, you know, changing the Sabbath so they can give people the Judaizer and the cult bewitcher as well on the Rome propaganda. Because then they can say, well, you must be a Catholic then. And they can get people like that. This is how oneness people get other sinners. And it's just blind leading the blind. Okay. And they end up going to the same hell as the Catholics. They can't prove that. So our calendar is set up completely different. With the Jew, if they had the names of their days every week, there is no way the Sabbath would have fell on the same exact named day. It's not even the way it was set up back then. So without going through the whole study, you can research these things with the word of God and find out that it was really about six days working on the seventh day. That's how it all fell together. And it by no means would fall on our same day of the week every week if you were transferring that over, if you will. So it's not possible. They just made that up. And which would mean then Sunday being the first of the week is also just made up. They just made it up. All right. So it's not a big deal right now. However, when we look at it just broadly, Jesus Christ was put to death. Now we use our days of the week just for a reference point. Okay. Not that this is what I believe to be a, like some dogma. But Jesus was put to death on Friday. People call it Good Friday, all right? And then he was buried, and then he spent the whole next day, which was to the Jew, the seventh day, okay? And it was a high day because it was the first day of unleavened bread, all right? You follow these feasts in the Torah. The day before was the Passover, then that day he spent in the tomb was a high day. It was a Sabbath and unleavened bread. Okay. The Passover is called the day of preparation. Now, some of these Judaizer doctrines with this get very deep into details and it's a fraud doctrine. Some will say he was killed on Wednesday and you get all the then Thursday and all these things. And then you have to follow what they're saying of how important it is to the day of the week today and all of that. So it goes deep. But according to the Torah, it was the seventh day of the week, all right, and to the Jew, and which would have been day 15, okay? And then on the first of the week, which was the first fruit, Okay, he rose again from the dead. All right, glory be to God. So that's how it is. So it's not 72 literal hours. So what does this mean? Now, if I go over to 
And you can find these scriptures, you know, Luke 22, 15, Matthew 28, 1, Matthew then still in 28 down to verse 8. You can see how that works out when it came to his burial and resurrection. So he was definitely in the tomb part of three days, all right? And that is actually enough to fulfill the prophecy by his own words, all right? Now I'm going to explain why. So if I go over to Exodus 19, 10 through 11, you have to spot the biblical speech, okay? And that that would make sense of what he said, all right? Exodus 19, verse 10, And the Lord said unto Moses, Go unto the people and sanctify them today and tomorrow, and let them wash their clothes, and be ready against the third day. For to the third day the Lord will come down in the sight of all the people upon Mount Sinai, and thou shalt set bounds unto the people round about, saying, Take heed to yourselves that you go not up into the mount, or touch the border of it. Whosoever toucheth the mount shall be surely put to death. So here we see that today sanctify them and tomorrow. So the tomorrow would have been a whole day. All right. So 24 hours. But today, the day had already started at least by a minute. Okay. And so it wasn't technically a full 24 hours, but do it today and then tomorrow. And then against the third day. On the third day, the Lord will come down. Now, if it had to go all the way 24 hours, then the Lord would have came down on the fourth day, technically. It's just the wording of it, right? So the third day was still the third day, all right? And it was only part of the first day. The second day was a whole day. But other than that, it was a part of each day and it counted for the third day. So that's biblical, right? Now, if I go over to John 2, 19, this is about the resurrection. John 2, 19, Jesus answered and said unto them, destroy this temple and in three days I will raise it up. All right, so if you look at the wording from Exodus and you take what the Lord said, and in three days I will raise it up. All right, so that would be the third day. He, by the commandment of the Father, was able to raise himself from the dead. All right. Now, still going with this, and there is more proof. If I go over to the book of Esther, and I go to verse 16 of the fourth chapter, Go, gather together all the Jews that are present in Shushan, and fast you for me, and neither eat nor drink three days, night or day, night or day. And I also, my maidens, will fast likewise. And so will I go in unto the king, which is not according to the law. And if I perish, I perish. So Mordecai went his way and did according to all that Esther had commanded him. Going to the fifth chapter, verse one. Now it came to pass on the third day that Esther put on her royal apparel and stood in the inner court of the king's house over against the king's house. And the king sat upon his royal throne in the royal house over against the gate of the house. Okay, so she used the word day and night. And it was on the third day, okay, that she went in. Not after, but on. Okay, so day and night even used there. And then, of course, it was on the third day, not after the third day. So not 72 literal hours. But the part of each day would count in the way this speech is presented in the scriptures. All right. Luke 13, going down to verse 32. And he said unto them, Go you and tell that fox, Behold, I cast out devils and do curse today and tomorrow. And the third day I shall be perfected. Nevertheless, I must walk today and tomorrow and the day following. For it cannot be that a prophet perish out of Jerusalem. So tell that fox on this very day. Okay, do cures today and tomorrow. And the third day I shall be perfected. Okay, so that's what he said. 
again, the same speech. It's just simple biblical reference points to what something could mean in prophecy. And this is how you understand things in the Bible, by using the Bible. Not using this foreign doctrine about Constantine and popes, and you get persuaded with that stuff. Listen, the Catholic Church can never change anything anyway. They can never change the Sabbath, right? But this sort of stuff is what the Antichrist is going to do and change the times and things like this. And he's going to lure people through that, all right? And this is all the Catholics have done to theirs. And then people on the other end use this propaganda, but they won't go back to the Bible. And then when they try to go back to the Bible after all that, you know, heady wisdom and voluntary humility, they make a mess out of it. Luke 24, 21, but we trusted that it had been he which should have redeemed Israel. And besides all this, today is the third day since these things were done. All right, so even it was acknowledged that it was the third day. All right. So this was acknowledged among the people. All right. So, and whether, you know, it was Jews, Gentiles, saints, sinners, backsliders, this is a biblical way that this was handled. Okay. And the people that knew the scriptures knew what he was saying, that it doesn't have to be 72 hours. All right. If I go over to 2 Chronicles 10, we'll take a look here. Just keep reinforcing this while I'm doing the video here. And Verse 5. And he said unto them, Come again unto me after three days. After three days. Now here's this wording. And the people departed. Okay, let's go down to verse 12. So Jeroboam and all the people came to Rehoboam on the third day as the king bade, saying, come again to me on the third day. So they came on the third day. Now, the previous wording, after three days. So here is maybe just a little different flavor of the same thing. It was that part of that day which was sufficient. Okay. Let's see what else we got here. Let me go to Genesis 42, 17 through 19. At this point, and then we'll read this, see what this gives us. So Genesis 42, starting at verse 17. And he put them all together into war three days. And Joseph said unto them, The third day, this do and live, for I fear God. If you be true men, let one of your brethren be bound in the house of your prison. Go you, carry corn for the famine of your houses. So again, put them in war three days. And then he came to them on the third day. In this situation, same as the others. See, now if you follow the feast days in the Old Testament, you're going to understand that Jesus Christ and this gospel was handled on Passover, high day Sabbath, which was the first day of unleavened bread, and then the first fruits. That's the way it worked. Okay. And there is no other doctrine. All right. This is according to the gospel and the figures of this truth. All right. So there is no time for Judaizing garbage, all right? Luke 2, 21, not dealing with three days here, but the verbiage, okay? And when eight days were accomplished for the circumcising of the child, I find this to be a very good one. His name was called Jesus, which was so named of the angel before he was conceived in the womb, okay? Eight days being accomplished were accomplished, Okay, now if I go to Genesis 17, 12, this is where the circumcision for the Jew had its beginning. Okay, Genesis 17, 12. And he that is eight days old shall be circumcised among you, every man child in your generations. He that is born in the house or bought with money of any stranger, which is not of your seed. Okay, so what's the importance there? Is that they circumcised on the eighth day. Okay, there was no one circumcised on the ninth day. Okay, there's no biblical teaching for that. But on the eighth day, okay. 
And I'll just go through a few scriptures to solidify this. If I go to Leviticus 12, verse 3. And in the eighth day, the flesh of his foreskin shall be circumcised. So we see accomplished. Okay, we see eight days. We go back to Genesis. And then we see in the eighth day. And then if I go over to Luke 1, 59. And it came to pass that on the eighth day, they came to circumcise the child. And they called him Zacharias after the name of his father. Okay, so referring to the circumcision of John the baptizer. This is the doctrine. Okay, so the accomplishing of the day, the three days and three nights on, we even see all the wording you could ask for. The part of a day is sufficient for the prophecy of Matthew 12. And Matthew 12, 40, although maybe at first look, would seem to raise you know, eyebrows of, okay, how does that work in the Bible? And that's fair. And if you have a sincere mind and you want actual truth, you can get it, all right? But when you start to listen to everything people say and this information they constantly are gathering outside of the Bible, this is what you end up with, and it's everywhere. It's not just Judaizing, like I mentioned at the beginning, but all sorts of different winds of doctrine. And they're just lying away to deceive you.